difference between organic and biodynamic farming? Mm. Okay, that's... I mean, I think quite objectively one answer is oh, biodynamics, I think, is, the, is probably the oldest way, the oldest um, system, if you want to call it that, of, of an alternative or natural farming. You know, if you want to have a snappy answer, like somebody wrote in the Times the other day, it's a, it's a turbocharged system of organic farming, it's, if you want to have a snappy answer. So there's a lot of overlap, but then the biodynamics kind of encourages you as a, as a farmer to push the envelope. I think there's X amount of human beings on the earth, and there's a reason that they're here right now. Um, there's a certain amount of land base that is suitable to grow food. And that's one big concern in that question is we are paving over and building over a lot of land unnecessarily or thoughtlessly, I should say. Mm -hmm. And so then we can't use the food production anymore. But if you realize that there is land and that the land can produce X amount of food, I think, um, and if you wanted to keep doing it for year after year after year, we have to treat the land a certain way. And I think certainly biodynamics is, that's one approach, that's the approach you take. You all, it all starts with the soil. Mm -hmm treat your soil well and that it'll treat you well in return and then you know we'll, we'll generate food to feed all of us. So tell me about the vegetables here again. Okay, uh, as you can see we label the, uh, all of the produce for its place of origin mm -hmm. and we are in the summertime now so thankfully uh, that place of origin for the majority of what's in the case is now local mm -hmm. and this is something very dear to me. Uh, if it has a red tag like this, it actually means this is grown right here on Hawthorne Valley Farm. And that I can actually walk out of here with a shopping cart full of food where I have a personal relationship with all the people who have grown the food is something that it, it's priceless. Um, do biodynamic cows live longer than conventional cows? Yeah, I think any, any cow that's treated organically or biodynamically would have a stand a better ch ch chance to get older because we just don't push them one-sidedly. You know, and conventional cows only think people are interested in is pure milk production, and sometimes you could say it's just fluid or water that they generate. It's not probably not even healthy milk. And but by doing that, you really stress the animal very, you know, unsuitably. And then I think the average in the, in the American dairy industry is that the cows barely manage two lactations. So that means two cycles with a calf. So the average age is right around four years, four to five years of age. It's very young, and I think, like I said before, this one cow right here is 15 years old. We have a number of cows that are 10 years old, and so I think our average must be probably more like seven, eight years. The fertility cycle is what drives the farm, and when you would, when you see these biodynamic cows, uh, I could ask the question, well, why do you think we have these cows? And then. Most people might answer, well, you want to milk them and get the milk and make yogurt and cheese. And I say, well, that is true. But the reason, the real true reason we have these cows is because they transform grass into manure, which then becomes the basis of our whole fertility program. And without that, this land would be not suitable to grow food for many years in a row. How do you feed the world? So first step, I think, is people need to think about food differently. We need more producers. And farming has to become a, an honored profession. There have to be local and regional food sheds created. As much as your, of your food as possible has to come locally and regionally. And you have to figure out how to do that because that's the most sustainable way to grow food is to not ship it. So that you create a kind of internal ecosystem where the thing can sustain itself. So the cows are always grazing on our land, that's what's nourishing them, and then they're providing the compost that, that feeds the vegetable garden and all the, the fields and makes it a sustainable, su sustainable enterprise. And then we all earn our living from doing that. We currently have an overabundance of CO2 in our atmosphere, creating the effect of global warming. To reverse this process, there are many things we can do. We can reduce our CO2 releasing industries, we can increase plant population, and we can capture more carbon in the soil through organic agriculture. Organic farming captures three times as much carbon in the soil as conventional farming. 
It captures more carbon through the use of diversified crop rotation and organic fertilizers, such as manure and compost. Capturing carbon in the soil helps reduce CO2 in the air. Conventional farming releases more CO2 in the air than organic farming, due to its dependency on herbicides and pesticides. Producing chemical fertilizer and herbicides is a CO2-releasing industry. If 10 medium-sized American farms converted to organic farming, it would be equivalent to taking 1,146 cars off the road. Just imagine the difference 10,000 organic farms could make.